Good afternoon. My name is Rajiv Kazanchi, and I'm from Hitachi. So our next next speaker is uh, Sanjay Akut, and he's going to be talking um, a very interesting topic on leveraging big data analytics on um, asset optimization, demand management, and how to basically protect the revenues. Sanjay, welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Well. Thanks so much. It's a pleasure to be here. I was going to start off with just a little look at that big picture of me. <laughs> my wife loves that picture, so I has to be in, that, in my slides. So my name is Sanjay Akut. I'm the Director of Corporate Applications for Duquesne Light. I've been on the job for a full five months now, so I am a seasoned veteran of Duquesne Light. Um, a little bit about me. I'm born and raised here in Pittsburgh. Uh, went to Carnegie Mellon, started a software company. Uh, and at Carnegie Mellon did that for about 11 years then I jumped into the corporate world and I've been doing that since in various IT leadership roles typically revolving around application development uh, enterprise applications and business intelligence which is why one of the big reasons that I was hired at Duquesne Light because I am charged with building out a brand new business intelligence function at Duquesne Light one currently does not exist the current state of Duquesne Light, we have a bunch of people that look like that. So they're just, we are in the midst of a big IT transformation. My boss, the CIO, is precedes me by about two months. So he came in a couple months before me and started hiring his IT leadership team and we are in the midst of a huge IT transformation. To give you a little bit of background, in November, as of November of last year, uh, most of our core systems were all on the mainframe. And so as of November of last year, we moved over to a new Oracle utility suite. And so it's the latest and greatest in the, in the utility world. And with that came the opportunity to collect and use many more pieces of data, okay? And so we put the system out into, into production and we have all of this access to data and all of our users are saying, but I had this report that I ran every day. I just need that. That's all that I need. I just need reports. And so they are, we are currently struggling with just getting them to stop thinking about just normal reports. Just everything with them is reports. And so I don't think that this is a unique situation to Duquesne Light. A lot of us in this room, as we take that um, journey from maturity level of an analytic culture, we all kind of go through this and we try to teach and get our users to, to think of things beyond just reports to them everything is reports so why am i here because when you think of big data i'm guessing that you don't necessarily think of the utility company right you think of the guys in jeans and they're fixing down lines and all of that so what why am i here at a big data conference well one of the reasons that i took the job five months ago was because i was so excited after i dug in and saw all the different types of data that we actually have available to us at duquesne light we start off with legacy meters. So these are the meters that you have on your house. And these legacy meters are basically feeding back these meter reads to us every day. And so basically what they're doing is they're saying, this is how much electricity that Sanjay has used over the past day. Here you go. We're in the process of going through and installing these new smart meters. So smart meters are little computers on the side of your house. And no longer will you see the dials anymore. And these meters actually track what we call interval data. So now, when I, and I get these reads four times an hour. And so whenever we get this data back, it says, Sanjay, from 2 to 2.15, use this much data, for, uh, or this much electricity, from 2.15 to 2.30, use this much. And so the amount of data has now just gotten exponentially bigger because of the number of meters that we're putting out in the field and the amount of data that they are now collecting and reporting back to us. We have about 600,000 customers at Duquesne Light, uh, between seven and 800,000 meters that are out there. Um, and we are about 150,000 meters in of replacing all the meters with the new smart meters. Within the next three years or so, everybody who's a Duquesne Light customer will have one of these new smart meters. So imagine the amount of data that we have coming in from that. We also have weather data. So obviously at Duquesne Light, weather really matters to us. We had an unseasonably cool summer to us, so we had a particularly down year right when I come on and my bonus is based on, never mind. So, 
so weather data is very important to us. We want to know what the weather is going to be like because then we can predict how much electricity that we would need to use. They're doing this now, but it's very anecdotal. Someone literally looks at a, looks at a weather forecast and they say, oh, well, based on that, we're going to do this. Imagine if we actually looked at the real data behind that. So that's some of the data. Billing and collections data, obviously, that's what most of us have in this room. And that, there's a lot of that type of data available to us. Uh, customer demographics. So who are our customers? Where are they? What are they doing? How do we know about them? We have a lot of this data. We're literally not doing anything with it. This is our, what we call our SCADA system, the systems that actually run the electricity network. This is what, um, that's data from the SCADA systems. Our substations are throwing off data to us. Our distribution network is throwing off data to us. Our call center has data. Who's calling? When are they calling? How many times are they calling? When should we ramp up call, the, the call center? How should we do staffing? All of that type of thing. It's all manual right now. Those, that's website analytics. So our website actually produces who's going to the website. When there's a storm or something, do people go to the website more? Do they... Did, are there particular times of the, of the day that our website is busier? Should we ramp up, ramp down, those types of things? Calls, um, that's IVR data. So when you call and you get the automated system and you're, we, we're tracking how you're going through it. We have all that data. We're just not necessarily using it. So the transmission side, the transformers that you see on your poles, those are all throwing off pieces of data to us that we are collecting and literally not doing anything with. And then this is a new one, social media data. So our marketing department is now starting to track all the different pieces of social media data that are coming in. And, uh, you know, they are reading it and kind of manually doing things. But think about doing some kind of sentiment analysis and things like that and how those things correlate with outages and all of that kind of thing. So these are, this is why I took the job. This is a lot of data and it's very exciting and we're not doing anything with it. We're, we're doing, uh, well, never mind, the guy looking at all the pieces, pieces of paper, that's what we're doing. And right now, everything that they're doing is all reactive. Everything that the business is doing is based on, let me look at a report of what already happened, and let me see then what I want to do based on that, okay? And again, this is not, this is your typical analytic maturity discussion. Everybody goes through this. Whenever you're trying to get an analytic culture in your organization, this is what you're dealing with. You're dealing with users that are used to just looking at things that have already happened. And one of the things that we want to do, one of the reasons that I'm here is to change that. We want to evangelize the use of data to support decisions going forward, to be proactive in our decision making and not reactive. So one of the things that we did was when we looked at all of this and taking the job and talking to all of my customers within the business about what I want to do, there was a huge um, ask, I guess. So basically everyone says, oh, well, that'd be great if you could give me this report. And they're all thinking of it as reports, right? But they're asking me, I want this report, this report, this report. It'd be great if we had that. So literally, I started five months ago. I hired a manager of BI two months ago. And we're just now, I hired my first business scientist and we're really trying to ramp up. But we have a relatively small team and we're just trying to get off the ground. So the approach that we took, I'm a software development guy. I come from uh, the, the agile side of the house. So I'm an agile development guy. And so what I wanted to do was rather than say, everyone stop. I'm going to take the next 18 months and analyze everything, and then we're going to build something for you. We wanted to go ahead and just start making quick wins, right? Like, where, where is some data already available to us that we can just grab and show, and the tools that we have available to us now. Excel on the desktop is an immensely powerful data analytics tool. So just grab some data down and start doing some things with it. So we picked two. So when you look at all that original data, we break it down into a couple of big buckets. And one is customer data, customer analytics. And the second is operational analytics. And operational can be a lot of different things. It's all of that data that I showed from the distribution, the transmission, the substations, all of that kind of stuff. What we did was we said, okay, well, we could get a quick win by doing some real-time monitoring of our SCADA system. So that's what we're in the process of doing. Another uh, kind of... Um, Confession here is when I, when I was asked to speak, 
I said, well, do you mind if I speak about what we're going to be doing and not about what we've done? Because I've only been there five months. So we really haven't done any of this, okay? So this is what we're doing. We, this is the first thing that we're building. We are building this, literally, this dashboard that is going to show real-time monitoring. And so imagine this is what our SCADA system, our, we have engineers and people that are just sitting in, a, in an operation center and they look at the, how the SCADA system is being monitored. But we can now extend that over to mobile phones and to dashboards and do notifications on there. So if something reaches a certain level, which is an indication that something might be going wrong, we can surface that much easier than within the actual SCADA software itself. So that was a relatively, the data is already available to us. We just need to collect it and kind of slap a visualization on top of it. Relatively easy in the business intelligence space. So that was the first thing. The second thing was, okay, where can we actually have an impact? Money, right? Who owes us money? Who, how many of you in here are past due? I can look that up right now. And so, um, so customer analytics and delinquencies, that's a big one for us. So who's overdue? What, how, how far overdue are they? What are the, what's the probability of us actually collecting that money? What's the best strategy to collect the money? Do you immediately pay if I send you a termination notice? If I send you a termination notice, should we just do that right away? Now, we're also a highly regulated utility, so we're not allowed to do all of that stuff. So we have to look at what the data tells us against what we're allowed to do and then make the best decisions. Right now, literally, that is all anecdotal. So we had somebody that kind of oversaw that area of it and had been in the business for 25 years and they kind of just, oh, I know how the best is to run. But when you bring in some new people and you start thinking about things a little bit differently, um, you find that there are different ways to accomplish these things. And using data and using analytics is key to being able to determine um, how to best proceed with getting our money in the door faster. So that obviously was a big one for us. So we can get at that data relatively quickly. One of the things that we're doing is we're actually building out our enterprise data warehouse to collect all of this stuff, figuring out what the best way to visualize these things on top of it right now. And um, literally, hopefully in the next month or six weeks or so, we'll have these things out in the wild for our folks to start using. And then we'll pick the next one. It's an agile, iterative approach to business intelligence so that we're not waiting before we actually start getting some value off of this stuff. So that's our short-term goals. What are the long-term goals? So the long-term of all of this stuff is, y'all, everyone's heard the smart grid, right? So smart grid. So we're gonna start capturing that data and this business intelligence and the big data behind it is going to be key to actually being able to implement a smart grid. So think about when you use electricity and, and, and being able to predict the places whenever, we, whenever electricity is going to be used the most. What happens is there's no way to store electricity, right? So if we're going to need a lot of electricity tomorrow, we need to tell our suppliers to kind of ramp up and get ready for that. If they ramp up and get ready for it and then we don't need it, then that's a waste, right? So what happens is that we want to be able to better predict the amount of electricity that we're going to be using. And right now, again, it's relatively anecdotal. It's these people that have been in the industry, and I'm not saying that they're doing a poor job. I'm saying that we can arm them with the analytics to make these decisions better. We can arm them with the actual data to hopefully be able to potentially automate this stuff so that no one's really even having to look at it. We can mix the analytic data with their anecdotal knowledge and maybe come up with some business rules around that that then allow us to automate this stuff. That's pretty exciting stuff. Think about with this interval data, think about being able to do predictive analytics, machine learning to find outliers and anomalies, okay? So we can use that for a number of different things. One of the things in the, um, in the summary of this session was theft and fraud detection. People do meter tampering. We can, we can be able to detect those things to determine when we're being defrauded from du as a Duquesne Light uh, customer is defrauding us. But think about if you also take those algorithms and use them to find outliers. Think about you have a Duquesne Light mobile app on your phone. It doesn't exist yet, but it will. Um, and we provide you with a tool that says, hey, 
We found an outlier in usage at your house in the last half hour or hour, and maybe you left your toaster oven on because it's just, you know, it's something that's out of the ordinary. There's no way that a person would be able to do that type of thing. And we can find those by running all of this data through algorithms, machine learning, all of that stuff to determine what your usage patterns are. I also don't want to just set thresholds and anything over a certain kilowatt hour, we're going to send notifications to everybody because if you have a hot tub, you're always going to get the notification, right? And I don't want you to have to think about what level that you want to set your threshold at. That's easy. I could do that today. I could say you tell us um, anything over X, you want to get a text on your phone. Um, we want to be able to learn how you use electricity and be able to make decisions on that for you and be able to make recommendations for you. If we say we think that you run your washer and dryer during the day, so during the day is the most expensive time to run electricity. So if you just ran your laundry at night, we could save you X amount of dollars. Those are the types of things that we're looking to do at Duquesne Light to help you make better decisions around your electricity consumption. So this is where we're going. How fast will we get there? I have no idea. <laughs> I really just do not know. We're just starting this journey. It's very exciting. It's the reason that I took the job is to do all of this stuff. We want to be able to you merge the operational analytics, that meter data, with the customer analytics. So maybe meter usage for you who lives in a big, huge house, that's normal. You know? But then whenever we learn about someone who lives in an apartment, that's not normal. So we start to find those things and start to learn those things by merging those two sets of data together we can really become a smarter grid. Uh, that's all that I have for today. Yes, sir. Can I expect a rate increase from January? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. They hired me, so they have to afford me. <laughs> yes, sir. We just started, so we signed something with the University of Pittsburgh, and we're actually in our Woods Run facility on the north side. We're, we're going to be building out microgrids there with the University of Pittsburgh to kind of learn that. So Duquesne Light is just starting to move in that direction. We're just starting to embrace all of this stuff to be able to help our customer base make better energy decisions. Yes, sir. Yeah, so I would say that the majority of them are where we are, and then there are some that are very far ahead. And so the great thing about utilities is we don't compete, right? So you're either a Duquesne Light customer or you are not. I can't steal you away. We're in the transmission and distribution business, not in the generation business anymore. We don't provide, we don't uh, uh, supply the data, the power. So we work together. So I can call another utility and say, how are you doing this? And they'll actually talk to me, which is really crazy for me to be able to, to do that with quote unquote competitors. But um, yeah, and there's a, there's a whole industry around just utility analytics in itself. So um, you know, it's pretty exciting stuff. But I would say there's a huge gap between the haves and the have nots. Um, but we're all using the same data. Yes, sir. That's right. You got to talk to the managers and say, hey, that report you're looking at, even the way you talk about it, we did scatter the grants today to the second base. So are you finding that's the simple? Absolutely. Yeah. One of the things that I say all the time in my organization is that this isn't necessarily a technology problem. It's an evangelism and a cultural shift problem. It's a change management problem. It's getting people to think about being an analytic culture and not, right? So. We, we are building on a particular technology platform. I don't even, I don't talk about it because it doesn't matter. Who cares, right? 
it's a matter of getting our users to think about things this way. So absolutely, that's the big, that's one of the reasons I think why I was put into the job is but I'm not a data scientist, I'm not a DBA, I'm more kind of the vision guy, I'm a data person, I'm a consumer of data myself, so when I run groups, I like to be able to consume data and look at metrics and those types of things, but I, I, I think that it's a matter of, um, communication exactly as you said. That's the big problem is getting people to buy in. Absolutely. Good question. Anyone else? Yes, sir. You seem to suggest that it's cheaper to run at night, but, but when you get a <laughs> bill from Duquesne Light, it just tells you you're paying this much money per kilowatt hour. That's right. Because you don't have a smart meter yet and we're not doing that stuff yet. Uh, yeah. So we don't have the data. So right now, if you have a normal meter, all we have is that you used X between the last time we read it and this time we read it. With the smart meters, they'll track everything. They're little computers on the side of your house. So that's something that the suppliers will then have to do. So the supplier side will then, but we'll facilitate that by providing that type of data to them, to you, helping to broker those deals, that type of thing. So I'm talking like, you know, don't go to Rich Riazzi, the CEO of Duquesne Light, and say, Sanjay said, okay, don't do that, please. But um, those are things that we, I know that we're looking into as an organization, okay? Anything else? Thank you so much. Oh, one more. Yeah, I'm curious about like, what kind of volume of phone calls that you get and, and what you're thinking about doing with uh, customer experience management with your with your, your telephone recording? So I don't have the numbers in front of me of the volumes of calls that we get, but we do staff, and it's all internal. You know, we staff our own call centers okay. right downtown. And um, this is a big part of it. So us working, we call it our customer care group. So I work very closely with them about the data that they need in order, and we just had a new VP of customer care was just installed literally three weeks ago maybe. So the leadership of Duke Gain Light is kind of changing over. And so he's a very analytics driven person and um, hoping to be able to work very closely with him to be able to make decisions. Call centers are actually a pretty metric based you know, organization that you can run. Um, we want to be able to, so one of the things that we're thinking of is you go onto the website, you go to do something, you maybe couldn't do it or you get to a point where that's not automated and you have to call, we want to then know that where you ended up on the website and that you then made the call because we know. Customer journey. Exactly, yeah, and we can then, you can go right to the person and we just take you from there. And we say, you know, yep, we know, we saw that you were trying to do X on the website, let us finish it for you and it saves you a whole bunch of time. So we're definitely talking about those things. Again, I have no idea how long it'll take us to get there, but we want to get there. Thank you.